Hello. Sunday. We're going to start in Europe and Merkel says Eurozone must act fast. This is in reaction to the S&P downgrades and asking the Eurozone to act fast, something that it doesn't do. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has called on Eurozone governments speedily to implement tough new fiscal rules after Standard & Poor's downgraded the credit ratings of France and Austria and seven other second-tier sovereigns. Quite a slapping. Ms Merkel on Saturday called on governments to implement rules outlined in December, the last conference, and to activate as quickly as possible, schnell, schnell, the 500 billion euro European stability mechanism currently scheduled to succeed the old rescue fund EFSF by mid-year. She's pushing them to sign up as quickly as possible to these austerity measures decided in December because a lot of the countries are going very wibbly wobbly on her. Very wibbly wobbly. Down in the comment section, which has been a good comment section, 724 gives us, I'm a bit confused. S&P downgrades the ratings. Yep, yep, yep. S&P also explains why they downgraded the ratings. And I'm quoting directly from their explanation of the downgrade. Open quotes. As such, we believe that a reform process based on a pillar of fiscal austerity alone risks becoming self-defeating. As domestic demand falls in line with consumers' rising concerns about job security and disposable incomes, eroding national tax revenues from S&P. And the response is to call for more austerity? Question mark. Am I missing something here? Or has European politics turned into a complete farce? I think the only thing you missed was that European politics has always been a complete farce. Plusmo 100. The myth that government spending leads to prosperity is crazy. If so, North Korea, Cuba and the USSR would be shining examples of strong economies with high living standards and they are not. Austerity is needed. A caps lock comment. Alarm bells. The UK and the US economies are doomed because of socialist welfare policies, exclamation mark. Sadly, it will take a revolution by taxpaying citizens to rid the world of all parasites living off government welfare, exclamation mark, by silver gold. Yep. Plusmo comes back into the comment section with silver gold is onto it this whole thing including the US and UK problems is due to politicians trying to buy themselves permanent re-election and handing out endless welfare which is bankrupting the world classic liberalism destroying as it has for the last 5,000 years so Plasmo comes in with a bit of historical perspective there Californian historian who is often to be seen quoting, uh, commenting in the Financial Times talks to mm, Plismo, not Pismo, but uh, talks to Plismo by saying, what are you talking about? How much money exactly do Cuba and North Korea spend? North Korea's budget, like America's, goes inordinately to their military. What figures are you looking at that show Cuban and North Korean spending? And by the way, this is, nor is this the reason for the USSR's fall. Historic, historians really going for it here. The European countries with low levels of public spending, Spain and Ireland, or more tax evasion, Italy and Greece, are those that are in trouble. The ones with high levels of public spending and higher tax to GDP ratios, those of Germany and Scandinavia that we noted yesterday among the triple A's, 
are among the most successful and sustainable fiscal programs on earth. Certainly it's the former, especially Greece, that are more likely to run deficits like America does, while the latter, more successful countries, higher level of public spending than those which are failing. Seems then as if America should have similar levels of taxation, similar public welfare institutions and similar proportioned military spending to Germany and Scandinavia if they wish to prosper. Finish by going over to the Telegraph UK. Income tax payments hit a record high of £153 billion. Income tax receipts hit an all-time high of more than £153 billion last year, with VAT and most drink and tobacco duties also reaching new peaks, according to HM Revenue and Customs. Ian Cowie gives us in the first paragraph... Four years after the credit crisis began, the total paid by taxpayers during 2010-11 increased by 10% on 2009-10 year to more than £447 billion. Interesting that the tax take was £153 billion. That's from direct income taxes, but it another 300 billion comes in via other ways so it goes up to more than 447 billion close to the pre-crisis peak for total revenues of 451 billion of 2007-8 so really the tax the overall tax take now is the same 447 451 as it was in 2007-8 in addition, in addition to record receipts from income tax, last January's increase in the standard rate of VAT to 20% boosted returns from 70 to 85 billion. And you get fuel tax and all other sorts of taxes to make that 450 billion in tax take. But note and think about and please comment on the tax take now is the same as it was in 2007-8 but the economy measured in GDP is around 20% smaller so the economy is 20% smaller but the same tax take is going to be taken out of that smaller economy how do we think this is going to work out bye